Hi guys, welcome back to Detailing and the Beast. I'm going to show you today how to use Forescan, yes you heard me right, Forescan, on your Ford Ranger. So we're, what we're going to need, we're going to need the Forescan software on a laptop. Uh, laptop is much easier using using this in the car than than a PC with a with a massive cable. So we're going to need a laptop, the four scan software, and we're going to need an Elm three two seven connector, OBD two connector. You can pick these up on eBay or Amazon. I will try and find a link and put one in the in the description below. Um, but it doesn't need to be just any ordinary one. You need one that's been modified. Um, I'll show you this here. So it's got a little switch on the side there. That isn't as standard. This would have been a cable that somebody's bought off from China, etc., and modified it themselves. There are instructions online how to do it, but to be fair, just buy a ready done one. It's much easier. I have tried it myself and succeeded, but I ended up with a switch that was out here on two million wires. So what does this do? It it will allow you to scan using the four scan software and this. It will allow you to scan for DTC error codes on your Ranger. So if you get an engine management light. You know what, sometimes they don't even plumb an engine management light on for some of these things. Uh, we had one the other day to check out um, rough running and it came up as a lean injector and that did not put on the engine management light. So, it'll allow you to read codes. It'll allow you to do some other funky stuff as well. So, there are there are actions in there such as setting the auto lock on the doors, etc. Changing like the, the, the miles per hour that that happens. Um... All sorts of bits and pieces. I'll, I'll show you some of them in a minute. Um, I've changed in the latest version. They've done the 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 smart alternator. You can turn that off so it does a target voltage for the alternator, and you can just whack that straight up to fourteen point four. So it effectively turns off the the smart charge functions. So what we're going to do? I'm going to show you the software. And then we're going to see if we've got any error codes. I don't think we have, but we'll see if we've got any error codes, and then get on to showing you some of these bits and pieces that you can do with Forescan and one of these little beauties. So the first thing we're going to do is go to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash Forescan.org that will allow you to get your latest software. I'm not going to teach you how to install it. That is not what this channel's about. But you literally just do do the downloader, run the installer and you'll get something like this now at the minute it'll say if you can see in the bottom corner it'll be not connected no vehicle interface that's because we haven't plugged in our obd2 connector yet what i have done is i've set it up by plugging it in and then i run the cable down and then what we're going to do is go and plug it in to our obd2 connector so the obd2 connector on the ford ranger is behind this panel here we literally use the handle there and pull the panel off. And once that panel is off, it's going to be that white connector there. So we literally take the end of our OBD2 reader, fit that in. Now I've got mine on a little bit of an extension lead because it's easier. But that's just a, a bog standard extension cable. That then runs back up to the laptop and then we can go and connect. So once we've plugged in, what we need to do is go to this top icon here, which is vehicle and interface inf to information, and then go down here and click connect to vehicle. So now it'll say, please make sure that the following conditions are met. So you need to be in the HSMS switch is set to HS can position. Now this will be marked. That's that little modified switch. Once that's on, you then need the vehicle not to be moving, but you do need the ignition key to be on. I'm just turning the vehicle on now. My switch is set to HS CAN. And then I am going to go and select OK. OK, it now has a connection. It says, would you like to use the profile? Now, this is just a, a bunch of settings that I have saved for mine when I've connected before. Your vehicle may contain the MS CAN modules, which it does. Does your vehicle have the switch? Uh, does your adapter have the switch? So we click yes. Please set it to MS CAN and then select OK. So now we go back down to our switch and we switch the switch 
down to the MS cam position, which I have just done, and click OK. It then goes off and reads all these different modules. And then, eventually, it will say ready in the bottom corner. So now what we can do is we can go into DTC here on the left. And as you can see, I've not got any issues whatsoever. But you can check into all the different modules if you want to. So for instance, the main one being ABS, anti-lock braking system, no errors found. But here you'd see if you've got any sensor faults, etc. It's really easy to get. Now, if you do have any, and you know them to be false positives, or you just want to reset them just to see if you, you, your code will go away, you can come down here, so you'd select your code, and then you click Reset DTC, and then it just asks you to set it again if it's in the wrong position, etc. on the switch. And, and you just run it. it. It's really simple, never had any issues with it whatsoever. Uh, I'll just go and have a look now and show you some of them options for what we can do to the to the Ranger. So to make some changes, what we've done, we've connected the vehicle as before, same as when you're reading these DTCs. Um, very quickly, there is service functions in here as well, so you can like um, get a DPF static regeneration going and all sorts. So you can force things to happen, um, but it's this one that you need. So it is the configuration and programming module. And the two that you're going to use most, in fact, I would say ever, don't use them AS built format ones. They're all in like hexadecimal code, so you'll, you'll have no idea what's going on. Um, so you want the IPC module configuration and the body CM configuration. So we'll go into that one first. was already in one so just let me go back so it's the bdm bdycm configuration click start it'll tell you if you're in the wrong position on your switch so we switch that over it'll go off and it'll read all the blocks and then what it'll do it'll give it you back in a nice easy to digest format now the ones in here that i have done is this dual battery mode now this is something that I've set myself so I've set it at 14.4 volts away from the 12 and that will get rid of the smart charge on the battery uh, it'll allow me to use a leisure battery in the tub which I've got another video on uh, so if you like that one go and check that out um, and then you can do all sorts of little bits and pieces here so you can turn on and off DRL lamps all that sort of stuff um, but this isn't the one where most people will use. So what you'd do is, if you wanted to edit one of these, for instance, this one. So you'd select it, click on Edit, and it'd bring you up what you can have. Now this is what's normally on a Ranger here. So it's got this dual battery mode disabled, as in its only target charge for a battery is 12 volts, and then it switches off. That's the smart battery. Standard alternators run at 14.4, so I have left mine at 14.4. And then what you do, you change it and you just hit right and then it would rewrite them blocks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of that and I'm going to go back in to the IPC one. Again, it's telling me to switch, so I'll do that now. And then we'll go and click OK. Again, it'll do all the reading. Now this is where you can do things like your, your belt minders. So you can turn off like that annoying beep for your belt. There's a lot of stuff in there. Now some of this stuff works, some doesn't. I mean, there you go, fuel tank size for instance. It would be good for some of you off-road guys, right? If you had a bigger fuel tank, you can change that to, to have more litres. If you had a bigger tank and somehow got that fitted, you'd need to come in here and change the number of litres in that tank so everything reads correctly. You can do that in here. Uh, there was another one I did as well. Uh, these key chimes as well. This is something I want to I want to change. So when you open the door and the key's in the ignition, and it'll constantly sit there and beep like that at you. It's kind of annoying, right? So in there we'd set that to disabled and then write it, and that would disappear. So in fact, shall we do that now? So now we've made that change. I've just gone back into that uh, module, that IPC module, and check that it says now. 
chimes key in ignition reminder set to disabled. So confirm that the keys are in the ignition. I'm just going to open the door. And we no longer have the chime. So that's that one sorted. So as you see, there's there's a lot of stuff in here you can change. I mean the the tire pressure systems in there. You can set that to different values, so different warning values at um, what PSI it goes off at. Um, th there's loads of stuff. I, um, the the belt chimes is probably the biggest one. So that you can turn off on the passenger side. You can set it um, at the driver side. You can even do, I think you can even do the one in the middle at the back. Uh, mid passenger belt reminder. I'm not sure if that's more likely for if you've got three seats at the front. You know, like a transit or something like that. But anyway, anyway, we're waffling. Um, yeah, so you can see you can get all that there. Now, just one last thing I want to go through. Um, at the minute, I am running on an extended license. So to edit most of these, you have to have an extended license. Now, you can get a trial license, and you can get that from the Forescan forum. So it'll generate a key and then you download it, etc. And then all you do is go into here and you'd go to this one at the bottom, this about section, and it'd say load key. Um, you can then go onto the Forescan website if you want to, if you want to have this for longer. I've just purchased um, a year-long trial and that's £8.29. Uh, sorry, an, a one-year license, full license. Uh, you can get one year for £8.29, I think it's two years for 16 quid, three years for 24 or a one like lifetime license for 41 quid. But for me, for the amount of times I use this, I just set it up quickly, get it set, and then jobs are good. Um, I have got a one-year license just in case anything goes wrong. Uh, I will purchase it as and when I need it then, rather than having a, a 40 quid's worth of lifetime license, because you can only use this on... One machine, it says, uh, which is not great considering this is a really old laptop. Anyway, if this has been of any help, hit that like button, uh, give me a subscribe, uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.